Hi guys, my name's Will and I'm one of the co-founders of Mining Store Australia along with my business partner Kel. Uh, if you're watching this video, then no doubt you're looking to get a bit more information on FPGA mining, uh, understand why people actually use FPGA hardware to mine, how people uh, mine with FPGA hardware uh, and what the actual return on investment looks like. This webinar is basically being put together to answer these questions for you guys, give you guys a bit more of an understanding of who Mining Store is as well, um, and obviously help you to get, uh, get involved with our hosted solution. Um, just a little bit about Mining Store and how we started. So it started as a bit of a hobby uh, between my business partner and myself, Cal. Uh, back in around 2015 or 2013, a little bit, we were mining with CPU and, and GPU hardware. Um, as the 2017 kind of bull run came about, we had a lot of people contacting us, uh, asking us to build them crypto mining hardware uh, to take advantage of it all. Uh, and so it became a bit more than a hobby for us and we founded Mining Store. Uh, what we aimed to do was basically bridge the gap for Australian investors who were looking to get into the crypto mining space, uh, able to build I suppose passive incomes for people and enable them to capitalize on the on the cryptocurrency market. We've grown our community to about 500 to 600 members uh, since we started. Uh, we now basically run quite a impressive community that we're very proud of, uh, where everyone shares their strategy, uh, talks about what's going on in the cryptocurrency space, what they're trading, what they're investing in, uh, and of course. Uh, shares what they're mining as well when they're buying and when they're selling the coins they're mining too. Um, I suppose we've grown quite a lot. We're now Australia's largest supplier of cryptocurrency hardware. Um, we also have grown our community to one of the biggest communities. Uh, and because of this, we've been able to take advantage of uh, hosted solutions for mining. So. In Australia, most people's electrical rates come between 20 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, we've managed to basically use the amount of hardware that we've got across our whole community as leverage. Um, and as a result, we've been able to get our kilowatt rate down to 12 cents per kilowatt. Um, we have a, a very strong focus on helping each other out. Uh, we've got clients as old as 90 years old who have been able to set everything up um, through the support of our community. Uh, so by no means anyone who doesn't understand the technical side of things, um, should they be worried about getting into this investment, uh, we've structured it in a way for people to get involved on any skill set. Uh, that's pretty much the major advantage of our hosted solution. All right, so why mine cryptocurrency? Uh, mining cryptocurrency is a really great way to achieve a passive source of income. Um, when you're mining, you are basically paying for an electrical rate, um, which through our hosted solution is about $3.20 Australian per day. Uh, and in return, you're getting an amount of coin, which at the moment is averaging between $10 to $15. So basically, once you've paid off the, the cost of your hardware, which we'll get into uh, through a spreadsheet that I'm gonna go through in a bit, you are looking at pretty much buying or mining cryptocurrency uh, at a discounted rate. If you're only paying $3.20 for an asset that's worth 10 to $15, um, you're basically getting that at a discounted rate and passively. Uh, by doing this, you achieve what you call a dollar cost average strategy. So rather than buying Bitcoin when it's at, at the moment, it's pretty close to 9,500 US dollars. Uh, what you're doing is mining little bits and pieces over say three to five years. That's how long the hardware should last. Uh, and by doing this, you achieve a dollar cost average strategy. So you don't get those surprises of buying something at 10,000 or $9,500 and then watching it drop to $8,000 over a couple of days or months. Um, instead, you're kind of buying in every single day or mining every single day um, and achieving that dollar cost average strategy. Uh, you also hedge against the cryptocurrency market. You do have hardware which has a, a given value to it. Um, rather than being all in on, on a cryptocurrency or a digital uh, asset, you do actually also have the hardware as well if you want to sell that off after you've broken even and a, and a bit of profit um, or if things start going the other way and you want to sell the actual physical chips, um, that is a, an option that's uh, available to you as well. 
Uh, when you're mining, you also can take advantage of pre-mine situations. So some coins actually aren't available to trade, but you can mine them for a couple of months or they're in a test net and you can mine them. This happened with CKB. Uh, and we've taken advantage of these situations quite a lot um, and been able to achieve some pretty substantial results. Uh, there's obviously taxation benefits as well. You can depreciate the assets. You can claim the electrical expenses. Um, you can also uh, look to basically set up a, an operation um, which, which compounds on itself. Uh, and we'll go into that through a, a spreadsheet in just a moment. Um, but we do advise you to use our partnered Crypto Tax Australia um, and set up a consultation with Adrian uh, to understand the full benefits of uh, taxation and mining. So how can you actually get started? So the first question you want to ask yourself is what is your kilowatt um, per hour electrical rate? If your electrical rate is higher than 12 cents or around 12 cents, um, then you probably want to use our hosted solution. A, because you don't have to build out a whole shed which has the circuit boards available um, to set up your mining operation or a farm in, if you're going for 20 to 50 or 100 units. Uh, and B, because if you're paying more than 12 cents, then uh, you're you know getting a less competitive rate than what we can even provide for you through our hosted solution. Um, so if you are deciding that you want to run your own operation and you say you have a solar farm or something like that, that's absolutely fine. We can help you set that up. Uh, the units are plug and play. So once they are delivered, we can even have the wallet, your um, cryptocurrency wallets for CKB, Digibyte, um, Bitcoin, whatever you want to mine, coded into the miner. So you just need to plug it into the power, plug it into the ethernet or, or internet cable, um, and you're off and away mining into your wallet. Uh, but as I say, the hosted solution is what 90% of our community tends to, to um, opt in for uh, because of the lower electrical rate. And obviously you don't have to maintain uh, the units either. Um, also with the hosted solution, it's very scalable. Uh, so you could start with 10 units uh, and decide in a couple of months that you want another 30 units. Um, and pretty much within 24 hours, to 48 hours we can get the ball rolling um, and within a week we can usually get those units up and, and mining as opposed to having them shipped to you um, you have to set up your circuit boards everything like that uh, it's a much more efficient way of doing things so much more scalable um, what will you be mining at the moment the most profitable coins to mine a CKB and Digibyte there's a table there for um, some, some of the results um, I've just noticed that uh, it should actually be uh, 26 gig hashes for CKB and uh, it should be 18 gig hashes, uh, sorry, 5 gig hashes for uh, Digibyte. Um, but basically, as you can see in this chart, you're looking at getting around $13.20 uh, for revenue um, on CKB, uh, which comes to about $10 profit. So we've been averaging $10 to $15 for the past six months. Um, and then there's some stats there for Digibyte as well. Uh, when you start mining, what you'll realize is there are ASIC and there is FPGA units. The great thing about FPGA units is should CKB or Digibyte become less profitable to mine, uh, you can actually quite easily uh, switch to another coin. Um, we can develop bit streams for it or if um, there's another coin that comes out and it's profitable, we will uh, develop a bit stream so that we can mine that. Whereas with an ASIC unit, if you buy, say, a Bitcoin miner, you're kind of stuck to mining Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and very few other coins. Um, should they become less profitable to mine or overmined, and, and you have to share profits too much with other miners, um, you're kind of stuck. Uh, whereas with the FPGAs, you can absolutely diversify um, into different coins quite easily. Um, one last note on that is there's a, st a strategy called indirect mining. So if you don't like CKB or you don't like Digibyte as a, Digibyte as a coin, that's fine. Um, you can sell that coin for Bitcoin, Ethereum and indirectly mine Bitcoin and Ethereum um, just by selling off the coin that you, is most profitable to mine, which at the moment is C uh, CKB um, and then diversifying your, your portfolio that way. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to go through with the why, how, what and you know what Australia, what um, Mining Store Australia is about and, and who we are. Uh, I'm not going to tap into the community too much. There's other webinars that I go through our community and, and, and how you know, proud we are of all that and what's going on in there. Uh, this one's specifically on the mining side. So what we're going to jump into now is um, a spreadsheet that we've built, uh, which 
shows two different strategies. It shows a simple mining strategy um, versus a compounding mining strategy uh, and the different results that you can achieve. Um, before we get into this, 90% of our community are using the hosted solution and 90% of them are also, or probably more, I would want to say 100% of them are using uh, the compound strategy. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to do that. If you want to follow a simple mining strategy, that's absolutely fine. Um, but it's just good to, to know that there is a, a bit more to mining store than just buying the units. Um, we do provide strategy and we do provide consulting as well. Um, just give me a second. All right, so I am going to attach a link so you can download this spreadsheet and play around with the numbers yourself as well. Um, but let's basically just go through it. So in this input table um, on the left hand side, we can put input um, what we feel a, a reasonable return is. So um, based on the previous data, we've been getting 10 to $15 for at least the past six months. So I've entered that in there, which is giving us an average of about $13.50. Um, Everyone's different. Some clients come to us and want to start with 50 units. When some clients come to us and want to start with 100. Some just want to start with a single unit. If you've never mined before, um, between one and 10 units is probably a good place to start. Make sure you're comfortable uh, with the investment um, and you understand how everything's working. And then we're not going anywhere. You can scale out um, as quickly as you like. Most clients start with one to 10 units. Um, and then once they're all comfortable with everything and they've been integrated with the community, uh, they look to scale out pretty quickly from there. Um, so this uh, spreadsheet's quite good. It does take um, into consideration discount um, rates. So if you buy one unit at the, the current time, um, which is uh, just the early February in 2020, uh, we're able to offer you um, a price of $3,997 per unit. Um, if you buy six units, so anything above uh, five, you're, you're getting a discount of $50 odd per unit, $47 per unit, um, and it comes down to $3,950. And this spreadsheet will account for this and change all of the data in the whole uh, spreadsheet. So um, let's base this off uh, like a, say a 15 unit mining farm uh, where you get $3,800. Um, just for uh, the holistic sake, I'll show you that the biggest discount we can offer is 21. So whether you're going 100 units or 21, uh, the price is $3,750. Uh, so we're gonna base this off a 15 unit mining farm. Um, as you can see, the power um, cost per month is displayed here. Um, you can see what your initial outlay is gonna be um, following our compounding strategy and um, what your initial outlay is gonna be following the simple strategy. So at this point, let's go over simple versus compound mining. Simple mining is basically um, just mining your coins on a day-to-day day -day basis, selling them off, say, every month. Uh, you take the profit that you make there um, and you get the profit from obviously paying your power bill and then keeping the rest of the revenue that's uh, left over. Um, you do this on a monthly basis, you probably return on investment will be around nine to 12 months for, for your unit. Um, and then once you've paid that off, you can enjoy uh, the next, you know, three, three to five years is how long the, the unit should last. So you can enjoy the next kind of, um, you know, two to three years um, of mining uh, and enjoy that passive income. A compounding strategy is basically um, basically what you're doing is you are you're out you're paying the power bill every month um, and you're using all the coins that you've mined to invest into new miners. Okay, um, so basically the profits on a simple mining strategy. Um, here, here's the the numbers. As I said, I'll, I'll attach this sheet and you can go through it. Um, and then there's a compounding mining strategy. As you can see, in um, month one you start with 15 units. Uh, and you actually have enough to buy 1.62 units. Obviously, you can't, you can't buy 6.2 of a unit. Um, so you buy one unit that month uh, and you have some um, money left over. Um, and every month you do this. So in your second month, you can buy one unit. In your, um, by your third month, you can actually already be buying two units a month now. So you can see this kind of compounding effect happening. Uh, and you keep doing that for the whole year and you actually end up with 45 units by the end of the year. Um, bear in mind you have paid uh, the power bill out, um, out of your back pocket as well. And if we go back to the inputs table, uh, what we are left with here uh, is basically, you know, $57,000 outlay for the 15 units. Um, plus, um, you know, at the start of the year, you, you, you have 15 miners and you're paying power and then, you know, incrementally increasing every month. Uh, by the end, you're paying for 45 miners out of, out of your back pocket. So over the whole year, you've got $31,000 in costs, uh, leaving you with $88,000. 
Um, but what you will see happen now is in the start of your second year, instead of mining with 15 miners, you are now mining with 45 miners, okay? So let's go back to that compounding um, sheet and let's have a look at these two strategies. So by starting with just 15 miners and selling out, we can see on the orange uh, linear line uh, that every single month you're just cashing out um, the, the revenue, paying the power bill with, with the mined coins um, and keeping the profit. And you, know, you end up with a, a linear kind of scale um, and you know, you're, you're ending up with around about $200,000 based on mining 10 to $15 um, on average, okay? In the compounding strategy, your return on investment goes down in the first year, so you pay your initial outlay, and then you're also paying power out of your back pocket, so you're going down, which is this blue uh, line here. Uh, but then at the end of your first year, you're starting to follow the simple mining strategy, but with 45 units now. Uh, so what you see is you get this exponential increase um, and by you know halfway through your second year, you've already caught up to the simple mining strategy and then you absolutely take over it um, from there, okay? Um, and ending on around $600,000 in, in profit um, based on obviously uh, returning you know, 10 to $15 um, per month, okay? Now, that's why a lot of our miners are following the compounding strategy. Um, ending your, you know, you're pretty much going from 15 miners to 45 in, in one year. Um, that's a substantial increase in your mining farm. Um, you know, you do have to pay out the power for the first year, so just be aware of that and make sure you've got the, the funds to do that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's quite uh, impressive, I suppose, uh, the results you can achieve from a compounding strategy. Now, the next thing to go into is there is a multiplier on the compounding effect uh, when you start with more units, okay? So if you start with 10 units, um, as you can see in this graph here, um, you end at around 200,000, which we just saw before. Uh, but if you start with say 20 units, um, then you can see the, di the distance between uh, the profit of where you end um, gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's because you take advantage of that compounding effect earlier. So imagine you only start with one unit, um, you're not even gonna be able to get a compounded uh, effect until say your ninth month or, or the end of the year, right? Because uh, it's gonna take about a year to get that enough to buy another unit. But then you get 10 units and you get one every month for the first couple of months. Um, and then if you start with 15 units already in, I think what did we say it was, uh, your by your second month, already you're able to get two units. So you get a, a better compounding effect as well, like all the compounding multiplier by starting with more units. Um, now definitely that's not to say jump in and you know go get some ridiculous loan or anything like that and um, start with as many units as possible. You need to manage your risk, you need to do it within your own means. Um, but it's just to highlight that you know there is a much better multiplier um, with starting with uh, more units there. Um, as I say, guys, uh, it's up to yourself where you start. Um, most of our clients look to start at around one to 10 units and then they look to pretty much scale out from there. Um, the average would be a client with probably about 10 or so units and they follow, um, or 10 to 15. Uh, that's why I chose 15 on this uh, chart as the example. That's where a lot of people look to get to pretty quickly or even 20. Yeah, but on average around about 15 uh, units. Um, and this is kind of uh, just a bit of an example of the strategy that you're gonna achieve there. Um, if you wanna follow the simple mining strategy, you find that uh, you're more comfortable with that, that's up to, up to yourself. Um, but just to show you what you can achieve with the compounding strategy. Um, guys, thanks for watching this webinar. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the link to the YouTube channel. Um, I will link this um, mining strategy uh, calculator in the YouTube channel as well. Um, if you've downloaded an ebook like the Bulletproof Guide to FPGA Mining, uh, you will actually be emailed a copy of this uh, calculator, which you can play around with yourself. Um, I'm always available uh, for you to book in a call if you like, if you, you guys should have my number through my emails. Um, please just send a text message, let me know what time you want me to call and I'll schedule you in. Um, but other than that guys, I'm looking forward to uh, helping you get set up with your FPGA mining. Um, it's been a great couple of years for us and our members and I look forward to getting involved with the community as well. Thanks guys.